Evolutionary biologists at the University of California, Riverside, have made a breakthrough by unlocking the secrets of black widow silk that will help science, industry, and even defense. The minds behind this research at the University of California, Riverside, are Professor Cheryl Hayashi, Jessica Garb, and Nadia Ayub. Professor Hayashi heads the team. I've been working on spider silk for many years now, and one of my um, goals of working on spider silk is to try to understand um, the silk diversity. So we know that there are over 37,000 described species of spiders, and you know just a handful of them have been looked at for silk genes. In my lab at UC Riverside, we're, tr we're taking a diversity approach to looking at spider silk evolution. So we are focusing, going to focus more on these four species because we've already started, you know, work on them. We already have genes cloned from them, but we're also working on a large number of other spider species. While scientists have known for a while now that spider silks have very, have um, very desirable mechanical properties that would be very useful for human applications. Jessica Garb and Nadia Ayub are helping to extend Professor Hayashi's research into new areas. The four main species that we looked at, one was a black widow spider, then there was another spider um, called Argiope argentata, and that makes an orb um, web, and that's also sometimes called a garden spider, so it makes that sort of wheel-shaped orb web. And then we looked at another spider, which makes uh, a similar type web, that orb web, but it's in a horizontal plane. And that spider is called um, Euliborus, and sometimes the, though the common name is the feather-legged -leg spider. And then we looked at another spider, which is really cool. It's um, called an ogre face spider. And this spider makes this sort of modified orb web, which is... Um, it's sort of like a net that they throw at prey. There's a number of reasons we chose black widow spiders to study first to try to get these full-length silk genes. Um, for one, black widow spiders are closely related to the orb weavers, and this group of spiders are the ones that make the very strongest and toughest dragline silk, and black widows, in fact, can, can make even stronger and tougher silk than other kinds of spiders. Um, so that was very important to us. Another uh, technical aspect that was important was that they have a smaller genome size. They have the smallest genome size of any of the spiders that have, have had their genome size measured. Why are researchers so interested in black widow silk, and what benefit might it have for people? Well, there's a lot of interest in using synthetic dragline silk to make uh, things like super strong body armor or... Um, cables, very lightweight but very strong cables, also athletic gear because it would be stretchy and, and, and lightweight and strong. Um, also there's interest in the medical field for things like micro sutures, so you can make a very fine lightweight suture that would hold together the skin and probably be very little scarring. And there's some interest in incorporating it into things like tendons because it is both strong and stretchy. I think the value of this AK silk gene is not that maybe we want to replicate, we want to mimic this, just this silk gene. It's that in the context of all these other silk genes, now biomaterial scientists have the ability to sort of pick and choose. And they can draw on this, this bank of, of information that's, that, that's accumulating so they could tailor a material for a specific purpose. So what is the next step in turning spider silk into useful materials? Well, the next step for this research is to fully characterize all the silk genes spun by the four species of spiders that we, we cloned the AK silk gene from. And once we know all the silk genes that are in those species, we'll have a much better understanding of how these silks have evolved. Stronger than steel and far more useful, spider silk may be the wonder material of the near future. Before Professor Hayashi and her team began their research, who would have known that these little creatures had it in them?